Hello Aquarius. This is your story for the week. We'll be picking your characters from this night sky playing card deck. It's a constellation playing card deck. And it's an interesting place to see what characters come out. Okay, so we have the we have Lyra, the lyre, you know, the instrument, the lyre. Um, and then we're going to, I want another character with this lyre. I think the lyre came up with Leo as well. So it's interesting. I mean, your two are polar opposites, so that's not strange. Okay, and the unicorn. Okay, so I think we have a story here of a maiden and a unicorn. Oh, Monoceros. Monoceros is the constellation, mind you. So yeah, we have the Queen of Spades and the Four of Diamonds. The Lyre and the Unicorn. We have a story about a maiden and a unicorn. Okay. Wow, we got two cards here. Okay. Protection from Scientists the nine of spades and the two of diamonds, protection from garden pests. Two opposite ends of the spectrum there again as well. Hmm. Might be a message there for you all about exploring both sides of something. All right, so let's get into this story. All right, so once upon a time, there lived a maiden, a maiden who was hired by a group of hunters to find and bring back a unicorn to the local noble woman. Now, this young maiden didn't believe in unicorns. She had never seen one. She had heard of them. She knew that people thought believed in them, but she really trusted her own, you know, what she could see and what she couldn't see. And what she saw day in and day out was that there wasn't really any evidence of these unicorns, save for like tusks, you know, that would sometimes show up in like the noble people's homes. Um, you know, she wondered like, was this from a unicorn or is it from a different creature, you know? Um, because none of the creatures she knew that grew horns, you know, grew only one. They grew usually two, right? But hey, she was about the money at that point. She was like, I'm going to get paid to go on this stupid quest. I'll get to see some, you know, like of the woods, you know, I'll get to go out into like nature. It'll be good for me. Um, and she thought about everything she could do with the money. So she wasn't like really the ethics of what were going on, like didn't really occur to her because she didn't really even believe in this unicorn myth, right? As she saw it. Okay. Um, so she, she goes on this journey with these hunters and the guy leading the whole expedition is like, pulls her aside and he's like, so you know what's gonna happen, right? No, he, he levels with her, he's like, I've done this before. And she's like, oh, so you brought back a unicorn before. And he says, yes, only, or well, he says, he doesn't say, he says, yes, I have captured a unicorn, however, Bringing them back is an entirely different thing. And he says, usually maidens can't stomach this, you know, and they usually turn against the troop, you know, and he's like, you're not going to do this, are you? And she's like, why would I, you know, she still is like, whatever about this story, you know, she's very skeptical. Okay. And she's like, why would I, I don't even know what you mean. Like, he's like, well, have you ever seen a unicorn? And she's like, no, I haven't. 
And he's like, ah, okay. He's like, well, it's very important that we bring this back. A lot's riding on this. So I need you to like keep it together. And she's just like, keep it together. What the hell does this mean? You know, like, so, you know, they go out into the woods. They have a lovely little procession. It's, it's a beautiful day, beautiful summer day. Sun is shining, the birds are chirping, you know, the land is gorgeous. And they, you know, decide to stop in this beautiful meadow where you can see like wildflowers around and there's little bees and butterflies, you know, <laughs> dancing from flower to flower through the grasses and they stop to have lunch there and as they're having lunch they're you know enjoying everything and they say okay we're gonna leave you here to the maiden and we're gonna go off and you they hand her a rope and they said when the unicorn comes you're gonna have to tie it up until we get there um, or until we come back because it's going to try and bolt when we, it sees us. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so she takes the rope, you know, and she's, and they're like showing her the knot, you know, and then they're, say their goodbyes. They leave her with her food and she hangs out there, you know, and she waits and she wonders and she tries not to let her thoughts like get to her, you know, as she's sitting alone here. You know, for a brief moment, she closes her eyes, you know, and has a little nap. And she falls into a lovely little dream, you know, where she's in this meadow and everything's soft and warm. And then she sees this incredibly vibrant, incredibly just, just when I say vibrant, I mean like the light just sh em emanating off of this creature in the distance is she never sees anything like it. And she's just enraptured in this light. Oh my God. God, it's so shiny, it's so beautiful. And she can't even really make out what it's coming from, but she knows it's the unicorn. It's the unicorn. So in this dream state, she stands up and she, the unicorn sees her and it's so excited to see this maiden because unicorns love maidens, okay? Everybody knows this. Don't question me about it. Unicorns and maidens are like this. It comes right to her, um, lets her like pet it. She rubs her face against its beautiful skin. She touches its incredible horn and she's just like in love. Like they fall in love right there. It's just, whoa, you know? And and she just cannot get enough of this intoxicating creature, you know, and she like, they lay, they sit down together, she strokes its fur, she talks to it, it communicates back to her and she's just like, this is all I've ever wanted, you know. And so they enjoy each other's company and they fall asleep together and you know, she kind of forgets about her task, okay? She forgets that she's supposed to put the rope around the unicorn. All right. So she awakens. What happens when she awakens? The suspense is killing me. What, what happens when she awakens? What happens to our maiden as she awakens? 
uh, she awakens and so does her her unicorn and you know um they're in the meadow and they're holding each you know she's holding on to it and it's like bolts up and she's like what's wrong what's wrong and she hears the men they're in the distance and she's like oh fuck oh fuck right so she um very quickly realizes that what's going to happen here is that they're going to like take her and this unicorn back and she's going to have to part. And in this moment, she has to make the decision, you know, does she tie up this unicorn, get her, you know, get paid, go back to her life? Or does she like run off with it? Right. Big decision to make really quick. And, you know, the unicorn is like, what the fuck's going on? Like, it's scared. Um, it's communicating this panic to her. She's still, they're still wrapped up in one another, mind you. So they can feel everything that one another is thinking, that one is feeling. The unicorn is like, you know, did you set, did you set me up here? Like, you know, and she's like, no, 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 it's, it's not like that. Like, I didn't even really believe you existed. You know, they're like having, because they're having this telepathic communication, you know. Um, and it's like, okay, you, ha it's like decision time now, decision time now. And she thinks about what she has back at home, you know. She thinks about the life she's built. She thinks about her, her animals, her family, her friends, you know, her future. And then she thinks about like you know, what kind of life is she going to have with a unicorn? Like that moment of doubt comes in, like we're, we're in love, but like, where are we going to build our home? You know, can I go live with a unicorn? Can a unicorn provide for me? Do unicorns even have homes? You know, So she makes a swift decision. She's like, okay, okay. And she puts the fucking rope around the unicorn's neck. And she coos at it in this gentle, you know, voice. Because she knows she can't go live with a unicorn in the woods. So the men come, the unicorn is freaked out. It's like, it's making all kinds of noise. It's, it's shouting, it's upset. They like kind of, um, they put more ropes around it to subdue it. Um, they kind of tie it up actually. They tie it up to a cart. And you know, she's like, please let me get in the cart with it. It needs, you know, it's, it's it, I don't want it to be upset. You know, she's like, even though she's decided that she's going to let these men take this unicorn, she doesn't want it to feel bad. You know, she wants it to feel as comforted as it can along this process, you know, of being taken away from the woods. And as she's like lying in this cart with it on this way back, you know, they're, they're talking and it's like, how could you do this to me? You know, I thought you loved me and, and I loved you. And, she, you know, it's, she, it's showing her like images of the land in which it lives. And it's like, you know, where I live, you don't have to worry about all of these things. Like you're not, a, you're not at the mercy of the elements. You know, we live in a, I live in another land, you know, where these things don't harm us. And it's trying to show her like what, what it's like, what, what the people are like there. And it's like, you know, if you would just believe in me, then we could be together, you know? And she remembers the words of the emperor, like most maidens, 
you know, can't, can't do it. You know, they can't, they, they, you know, can't go through with it. And so our maiden reaches into her boot, takes a knife from it, and cuts the unicorn free. And it bolts off without her. And, you know, the men see what happens. They're like, fuck, it happened again, you know? And she's like doubly, she's like brokenhearted because like not only, not only did she like betray this unicorn that she had loved, so deeply like in the pit of her stomach you know the grief of like him just taking off she also knew that when she that these men were like really pissed off at her and that you know she would not be hired she would not get a chance to go out to where she was again and see try to find her unicorn and she knew that she wouldn't even get paid So the leader of the um, the company, you know, takes her out of the cart and tells her to walk home. And they leave her there, and she t- it takes her until the next mid morning to get back. And when she gets back, everyone's, like, upset with her. Like, they're like, what the hell? How, well, how could you do such a thing? What's wrong with you? Like, da-da-da-da-da. And she just has no answer for them. She took a vow of silence and actually decided to join a nunnery after this happened. So she moved away completely from her home, everything she had knew, her family, and dedicated herself to God. And oftentimes she would look out into the distance and wonder what might have been.